After it was published in 2007, Agricola quickly became one of the most popular modern strategy board games. This video is about the revised edition and the A, B and C expansion decks. I want to take a look at the occupation cards that uh, score you bonus points. Have you ever seen somebody score 45 or 50 points in this game? Bonus point occupations are one way to do it. Welcome to Unfussy Board Games, I'm Terry O'Neill. This video is about bonus point occupation cards in Agricola. That's the cards that have this um, bonus point coin printed on them. I'm going to talk about uh, which cards to look out for in a draft that are available in the revised edition so far. I'm going to talk about uh, what I consider when I'm trying to decide whether to draft one of these cards and also I showed a lot of these bonus point occupation cards to an agricultural historian, uh, so keep watching to get his take on the theme. If this sounds interesting to you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to hear about more videos like this from the channel. Agricola comes with 48 occupation cards. The A, B and C decks all add 60 more occupations each. That makes 228. Out of the 228 occupations, 32 of them are bonus point occupations. That is about one in seven, which might not sound like a lot, but that means as each player is initially dealt a hand of seven occupations, they can expect to see one bonus point occupation. I know, almost like they planned it, right? Hey! PlayAgricola.com gives each card a power rating based off the data from the gaming on its website. So it's interesting to see which bonus point occupations top the list. And of course, top of the list is the Braggart. And that's no surprise. He used to be banned in the old edition in some tournaments because he was so strong. It's been revised, but he's still a no-brainer. I think that's because uh, it gives you bonus points for effectively what you're going to do anyway, which is build minor improvements. Uh, interesting to see the estate manager on there. Uh, I hadn't really noticed that card, but uh, I guess it's because, again, of the potential. Uh, especially if you got early veg, you really could score five or six points off that card. Uh, I did try in one game after seeing this and uh, failed miserably. I actually scored 30 points in that game. Um, but uh, and then also interesting to see the cow prince and uh, full farmer. Uh, the cow prince, I guess, again, it has quite a lot of potential, though there's less opportunity to get early cattle. Uh, but uh, early cattle in the game. But yeah, interesting to see those um, on the list. I hadn't really thought about drafting them before, to be honest. In my last game, I drafted the clutterer and the fallow grazer. The fellow grazer gave me four points because uh, I managed to make two big pastures and uh, that was fairly easy. Uh, the clutterer scores you points for having or for playing certain particular types of cards. The clutterer was the second card that I drafted so I spent the rest of the draft looking for those cards and I managed to find six and played them all for another six bonus points. The clutterer, you know, you have to play it early game, so it's costing you that action playing it and it's doing nothing but scoring you points at the end of the game. But uh, for six points for the clutterer and four for the fellow grazer for a total of 10 bonus points, that was really terrific and helped me score 45 points. Uh, I was still beaten by uh, an opponent who scored 50, scoring off uh, bonus point minor improvements, but um, that's another video. 228 occupation cards, each with unique artwork and exquisitely designed theme. Who makes a game like this?
so, so this are we yeah. now are we, are we yeah should we should we just start have you um heard of the game agricola before we were discussing it no i haven't uh <laughs> i don't play a lot of games unfortunately but um no i haven't but i'm very interested to 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 hear about it i think grazer is something to do with having the size of the pastures historically a, a grazier would a be grazer. um, someone who you know was primarily employed in the grazing of animals something the grazing of livestock so those for for instance with a, a particularly large herd of of cattle or a large flock of sheep um would be considered to be a grazier well that makes sense thematically with the game here because um this is to do with players being rewarded for having large pastures so i really like that detail these are um bonus point occupation cards which uh are yeah. quite sought after in the game and often in the 17th century sort of in the late in the 16th and 17th centuries uh, certainly in england you get the, the the growth of um larger flock sizes for instance of sheep and 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 and, and, and larger herds as sort of the pastoral economy intensifies um so so the sort of types of farming which um which husbandmen and and and, and uh, are, occupied in often becomes more specialized. Have you ever had this experience where you produce this great looking farm and the player beside you scores more points than you with this pitiful excuse for a farm? That is of course because he's scored lots of points from the cards. What I've learned is that rather than looking for cards to help me build the farm that I want, I'm going to build the farm that the cards want. Um, um, I have to decide before the game starts, am I going to be an organic farmer or am I going to be a full farmer? Am I going to be trying to do lots of fields of grain or am I going to be trying to do a mansion of stone? Whatever is going to score me more bonus points. The crazy thing is you've got to sort this out in the draft looking for both bonus point cards and cards that are going to help you score them all in the before you take the first action in the game. We know that there aren't that many of these bonus point occupations. So generally, if I see one, I'm going to draft it. But if I have a choice, I guess I'm thinking to myself, how many points will I be able to rinse out of this card? Some of them have limits. Some of them just offer a set number of bonus points. But I'm particularly interested in those cards that you can score five or six bonus points from. Uh, those are the ones where you really need to gear your game towards scoring that card. Then there are those four bonus point occupations that offer you quite a lot of points, uh, but also offer you four wood early game. But you can only get that if you tell the other players that these bonus points are up for grabs. Uh, so you're giving them the chance of stealing them from you. I always find that a tricky decision whether to play it early for the four wood or to hold on to it and play it at the last minute. Generally, I'm gonna go for the four wood early game because that's too good to pass up, isn't it? Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you to Dr. James Bowen for contributing to this video. You can see the full interview on the channel. Uh, also, if you want strategy tips on another modern classic, Imperial 2030, there is a video available on that on the channel now. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, please consider supporting the channel by hitting this subscribe button below or liking the video or sharing it. Uh, but thank you for all of your support so far and I'll see you in the next one.